Today, you're connected more than ever. Your friends, your family, your life. Having a partner that understands banking is what you do on your time, anywhere you like. It's about being connected. Renaissance Bank, understanding you. Sponsored by Renaissance Bank. Good morning, Northeast Mississippi. This is News Break for Wednesday, January 25th. I'm Brad Locke. Appreciate you joining us today. You can catch News Break every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. You can watch it at djournal.com on Facebook, YouTube, or the Daily Journal mobile apps for Apple and Android devices. I'm going to take a quick look now at news, sports, and weather on this Wednesday. Let's start with the weather underground forecast for today. Rain is likely. You're going to see a high of 63 degrees, low of 38 we have a 70% chance of rain. But the three-day outlook as we get towards the weekend looking very pleasant. Clear skies on Thursday, a high of 49, low of 31, 0% chance of rain. Friday, clear skies again with a high of 50, low of 31, 10% chance of rain. And Saturday, clear skies, high of 52, low of 33, and a 0% chance of rain. Let's take a look now at some of the top stories from the Daily Journal and djournal.com. Today, state lawmakers are considering a plan that would merge Tippecanoe County's two school districts. Mississippi Senate Education Chair Gray Tollison has offered legislation that would combine the North and South Tippa school districts. Tollison said the merger could provide more viable educational opportunities for students. However, Representative Joey Steverson of Ripley said he is not sure the merger would save money. Meanwhile, it appears the Okalona School District will be spared its own consolidation. Legislation introduced by Tolleson last year was set to combine the Okalona, Chickasaw, and Houston School Districts. That move was delayed while a committee studied the issue. The report presented to the legislature by the study committee said it appears few, if any, people in the county support the consolidation. However, Tolleson is forging ahead with plans to merge Chickasaw and Houston, but to leave out Okalona. He said Oklahoma has some unique issues, such as the fact that its district lines go into Monroe County. Both mergers are still pending in the Senate. They would only include combining administrative staff, not merging individual schools. Northeast Mississippians are lending a helping hand to tornado victims in the southern part of the state. Three confirmed tornadoes touched down last Friday and Saturday, damaging more than 1,400 homes in eight counties and leaving more than 1,000 homes without power. There are four confirmed deaths and 60 injuries associated with the storms. Tupelo Christian Preparatory School is accepting donations of non-perishable food and can openers, baby formula and diapers, toiletries, bottled water, and pet food. The Salvation Army and American Red Cross are both taking monetary donations for the relief efforts. North Mississippi American Red Cross Director Patty Tucker said her organization sent an emergency response vehicle and three volunteers to the affected areas Sunday. And eight Days of Hope has already dispatched crews to help tarp roofs, clear trees, clean up debris, and help as many families as possible. President Steve Tiber said work in the field will begin Friday, and the group plans to stay on the ground until at least February the 17th. Lee County leaders are looking to address an overcrowded youth court docket. The county's Board of Supervisors approved a resolution Monday asking the state legislature for the authority to appoint a youth court referee. For certain kinds of cases, a referee would have the same powers as a judge. However, a referee would cost Lee County significantly less than an additional judge. Now, right now, only County Court Judge Charlie Brett can preside over youth court matters. Other counties comparable in size to Lee County have multiple County Court Judges. Brett hears criminal and civil cases in addition to acting as youth court judge. Now, if the legislation passes this session, supervisors would be allowed to create a referee position, but it would not be mandated. Board of Supervisors President Phil Morgan said they would be happy to do that if the funds are available. Brett said Lee County should have gone to two judges years ago, but he admits a referee is more cost efficient. A referee will cost less than $100,000 a year, while a second judge could easily cost $400,000 or more. And in sports, Ole Miss and Mississippi State return to the basketball court tonight in SEC action. The Rebels, who host Texas A&M, are looking for their third consecutive win. They defeated Missouri on Saturday with leading scorer DeAndre Burnett returning to the lineup after missing the two previous games with an ankle injury. Burnett scored 14 points in 36 minutes against Mizzou, and although he said his ankle was a little sore after the game, he's eager to get back at it tonight. Burnett had moved into the point guard role just before his injury, and coach Andy Kennedy believes that switch could help in his recovery as it requires less cutting and fewer quick movements. 
MSU, meanwhile, will, inter will entertain Missouri tonight. Coach Ben Halland was not happy with the Bulldogs' effort in Saturday's 91-74 loss at Tennessee, especially on the boards. MSU was out-rebounded by 14, and it currently ranks last in the SEC in rebounding. Playing Missouri could be just what the Bulldogs need right now. The Tigers are 0-6 in SEC play. That's it for News Break on this Wednesday. We do want to remind you to check out a couple of podcasts we produce here at the Daily Journal. The Memo, all things Northeast Mississippi news and entertainment with myself and W. Derek Russell. You can find new episodes every Wednesday and Friday. Uh, find them for free in iTunes, your podcast apps, or at memo.djournal.com. So look for a new episode this afternoon. And also today, look for a new episode of Prep Rally, a high school sports podcast with myself, Blake Morgan, and Gene Phelps. That's available in iTunes as well, any of your podcast apps, or at preprally.djournal.com. All the stories I talked about today you can find in your daily journal and at djournal.com. We're on Twitter at djournal now. Give our Facebook page a like as well. That's it for News Break on this Wednesday. I'm Brad Locke. We'll see you next time.